In the 19th century, the uh, streets of cities particularly, or even large towns, became a place where uh, people uh, uh, put on shows. Uh, they created spectacles, very self-consciously often, uh, usually organized, but not always. Uh, and they did so uh, for all kinds of reasons, um, uh, to celebrate, uh, to protest, uh, to register opinions, uh, to affect uh, uh, political positions, um, to raise up their own status. Um, uh, there were many reasons people came out into the streets, but they did so uh, very, very often. Uh, we think sometimes of the 19th century as a time when, you know, the franchise was quite limited. Not, not everyone could vote. No women could vote. Aboriginal people couldn't vote. Um, only some men could vote in some places if they owned property. A, a very complex picture altogether. Um, but we think of the limitations on the right to express your opinion. But if we look at these spectacles, we come to see that uh, all kinds of people could uh, register their views, make their presence known, uh, express themselves in the streets. Uh, often very colorfully. Um, uh, various organizations uh, had colorful uh, silk banners. Uh, very often uh, the wives, the leading men of the organizations would, would prepare these banners uh, very, very carefully and they'd be carried proudly by the men uh, who were marching in the streets and trying to get across some kind of message about who they were and why they were important, why their views should be taken into account. Um, uh, or uh, the Orange Order was particularly well known as an organization that wanted its views to be out there and that had a marching tradition that wanted to be seen in public. Uh, and uh, they had some very, very colorful banners. Uh, they were also uh, perhaps the best of all the voluntary societies in, in having uh, bands ready to uh, play and accompany their demonstrations. So there'd be uh, uh, something lively to look at, uh, lively music to listen to, uh, there'd be uh, the stomp of the marching feet, uh, and the public would come out to, to witness these occasions and um, uh, take some kind of interest in them. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, people uh, would uh, oppose those who were marching, um, and uh, object to, to their presence in the streets, uh, sometimes forcefully by throwing mud or stones at them or trying to block the procession from entering certain streets or areas or going past certain key buildings that were significant. Uh, uh, this was particularly a, a situation be, uh, for the orange and green in the 19th century. Uh, uh, the Irish traditions uh, of, of Protestant and Catholics who, who were used to taking to the, the streets. Uh, um, the Irish Catholics particularly on St. Patrick's Day, March the 17th, the Orangemen particularly on Orangemen's Day, the glorious 12th of July. Uh, and these were occasions when, when large numbers came out into the streets of, of either green or orange uh, to, to show their strength in numbers, uh, to demonstrate their support and their opponents also came out and, and challenged that uh, strength and tried to show that they, they weren't so uh, influential or important. Other organizations also took to the streets. Um, uh, trade unions um, from an early time liked to uh, show uh, their strength and their respectability. They were very concerned in the 19th century uh, not to be seen as part of the rabble, part of the lower class that couldn't be trusted. Uh, instead, they wanted to demonstrate that they were men with, uh, 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 who should be respected because of the skills they had, because of the productive work they did that enriched uh, the community, uh, that they were uh, 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 men who were prospering from their work when they were properly paid, as they hoped they would always be. Uh, and so they dressed immaculately for uh, the procession, sometimes in uh, their uh, uh, in clothing that signified their occupations, uh, but sometimes also uh, 
uh, in, in uh, just wearing their Sunday best in order to look as respectable as possible. Uh, um, uh, they seldom uh, met with conflict in the streets. Uh, uh, generally, the public uh, seemed to say uh, the, uh, the, the processions of the workmen uh, are respectable and they have a right to take to the streets in these ways on occasions. Working men also took to the streets, though, during strikes, and very often uh, they were uh, uh, acted as picketers, uh, trying to prevent uh, businesses from functioning while a strike was underway. Uh, very often uh, in the 19th century, the businessmen would hire strike breakers, or what the strikers called scabs who would uh, continue to work throughout the strike and try to defeat the strike by doing so. Um, and it was the job of the strikers to provide, uh, to prevent the, the scabs from getting into work or, or being productive. And so they would block entrances and they would shout at the uh, scabs and insult them, calling them, them rats, uh, you know, less than real men, uh, 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 disgusting creatures. Um, and uh, uh, conflicts would sometimes erupt uh, around these uh, kinds of situations. I've been looking at one uh, uh, strike in particular recently, uh, a strike on the street railways of Toronto in 1886. Uh, this was a time when uh, a private company operated the streetcars, and the streetcars were, were powered by horses still. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, owner of the street railway company uh, would have nothing to do with trade unions. The Knights of Labor, one labor organization prominent in the 1880s in North America, uh, tried to organize the street railway uh, uh, conductors and drivers uh, into a union, and the owner said, I'll have none of that. He expected all his employees to sign an ironclad agreement saying they would never join a union. He wanted a union-free environment so he could run his company however he wanted. He didn't want any interference, any uh, limitation on his power. And so the uh, uh, unionized uh, workers went out on strike, um, a few hundred of them, and they tried to prevent uh, scab workers hired by uh, the uh, company to operate the streetcars. In this strike, what's particularly interesting is that huge numbers of uh, uh, members of the public, all of them really men and boys, uh, came out supposedly to support the strikers. Great numbers of people in Toronto hated the street railway company. They thought it gouged the public. It charged too much money. Its service was erratic. Its service wasn't adequate in the suburbs and so forth. So they, this was an opportunity to get back at a company that wasn't at all liked. And these men and boys came out and they uh, went nuts in the streets. The strikers were very concerned about their reputation and were very careful about behaving themselves, obeying the law, not getting involved in any violence. They certainly didn't want a riot to occur. Uh, but these other people who just showed up, uh, who had no particular connection with the company or the union, uh, weren't under those constraints. And they did all kinds of crazy stuff in the streets. Um, uh, one of their favorite things to do was to uh, block a streetcar run by a scab, um, first by uh, throwing all kinds of mud at the driver and the conductor who were outside on platforms in those days, they, they, so they weren't protected in any way by the streetcar. Um, uh, and then they'd uh, uh, grab hold of the horses and prevent the streetcar from going ahead. Um, it was a, a sign of triumph when they detached the horses from the streetcar and they'd take the street uh, the horses back to the barn, and the crowds would cheer when that happened, that the, you know, the, 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 the streetcar had been immobilized. This was a victory. But then the real victory came when the men would all gather around the streetcar and heft it up, 
turn it sideways and plop it down crossways on the tracks. And that was a sign of the complete powerlessness of the company and uh, the, the strength of the crowd, uh, their, their, uh, their victory.